Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about voltage regulators. And uh, we mentioned a little bit about them in the previous video when we talked about the power supply design. Um, and if we recall, a voltage regulator is basically a circuit that provides a stable output DC voltage, which is uh, meant to be robust or independent of variations in line voltage, meaning variations in input voltage or unregulated input voltage and also robust variations in loading conditions, meaning whether uh, the load is drawing zero current, meaning no load is connected, or a load that is drawing the maximum amount of current, uh, the variation in output voltage based on those extreme conditions uh, is what the, the load regulation will measure. Typical performance parameters, again, for a voltage regulator will be line regulation, which measures uh, the variation in output voltage with respect to the variation in the unregulated input voltage, so delta V out versus delta V in, the load regulation, which measures variation in, of output voltage uh, based on changes in loading conditions, typically is calculated as the, uh, uh, the difference of the V out for no load minus V out for a full load divided by the nominal value of V out, which is V out with no load. Uh, typically expressed as a percentage, so times 100%. Uh, oftentimes, line regulation will also be expressed as a percentage. And then uh, another common one is the dropout voltage, uh, which is simply the, the delta between the unregulated input voltage and the output voltage. And uh, the reason why that is important is because typically the smaller the dropout voltage, the better the power efficiency of the regulator. Um, Typically, for uh, most linear regulators, the dropout voltage uh, tends to be around 2 volts. And, uh, but there are now uh, you know, a new family of linear regulators, which are LDO or low dropout regulators, and so that amount can be decreased substantially. In uh, broad general terms, we can classify regulators as uh, linear regulators versus switching regulators. And it's all depending on how they operate. In the case of a linear regulator, they contain active devices that are operating in their linear region, and therefore they're always on. And in the case of switching regulators, they contain active devices that are being switched on and off, um, and, and therefore they're not always on. Because of this difference in operation, switching voltage regulators tend to have better power efficiency than their linear counterparts. However, there are advantages and disadvantages to both configurations. Uh, in the case of linear regulators, again, they have typically less power efficiency, but they are uh, often simpler and, and cheaper to build, uh, less noisy than switching regulators. And uh, switching regulators are uh, perhaps more flexible than linear regulators in the sense that there are uh, there are some things that we are able to achieve with a switching regulator that we couldn't with a linear regulator, like uh, starting with a positive input voltage and um, ending with a negative output voltage, for example, or even ending up with an output voltage that is higher than the input voltage. Uh, however, switching regulators tend to be more expensive to build. They use an inductor typically as their energy storage element, and, um, and they tend to be more noisy than linear regulators. And so depending on uh, the particular circumstances and application, one or the other may be the right choice of regulator. So let's take a look now at some circuits, some sample uh, regulator circuits to see how they operate. So here we have a simple version of a voltage regulator. Uh, and this is uh, not even a linear regulator, it's not even a, an active regulator, but rather a passive regulator. And it simply uses uh, a Zener diode to regulate the voltage across a load. So I have my unregulated power supply and it's providing some voltage, and the idea is that I connect that voltage to a zener via a, uh, a resistor R that, that I've labeled RZ, and that's just there to bias the zener diode um, to provide the current to put the zener diode into reverse uh, breakdown region. And, uh, and then basically the load resistor is connected across the zener. And the zener diodes uh, typically come rated for different voltages, and so depending on the particular uh, regulated output voltage that we will want. Uh, let's say we want the regulated output voltage of, I don't know, 5 volts, all we will need to get 
is a 5 volt sinner and uh, connected across our load. Now, the, the advantage of this circuit is the simplicity. Um, basically, I will have, you know, this is my VZ. RC will be connected there to uh, provide sufficient current to put the sinner into its reverse breakdown mode and the voltage that will appear across my load will just simply be VZ. Uh, the problem with this configuration or, or the limitation of this configuration is that, as you will notice from the uh, plot, uh, different loads are going to draw different currents and therefore uh, the current that is not being absorbed by the load, let's imagine, you know, under maximum power conditions, uh, the load is drawing half an amp, but under minimum uh, load conditions, the load is drawing, let's say, 0.1 amps. All that excess current is going to go through this inner diode. And so we're talking about large differences in current through the inner, which if we plot them, you know, we could end up with this being my, uh, my nominal amount of current for my inner and my nominal voltage. But if I were to severely increase, so this will be V inner one, let's say, and this will be my I inner one. Let's say that's what I nominally designed for, but then let's imagine that under loading conditions that are not drawing all the current, uh, then I might have a lot of additional current being dumped through in the center, and this will be my IZ2 and my VZ2, and so I will end up with uh, a, a slight voltage variation, so basically a voltage regulator that wouldn't be very robust, or an output voltage that will not be very robust, to variations in load conditions. So we're looking for um, circuits that can provide a little bit more stability than this simple circuit. So here we have our first active open regulator, which is a slightly more sophisticated regulator than the simple Zener regulator. Uh, notice that it's a, uh, almost an identical circuit, except we have now added an op amp, uh, a voltage follower specifically, as a buffer between the Zener and the load. And uh, what this prevents is for our zener to have to absorb uh, the, the differences in uh, in load current. Uh, in this case, the op amp is absorbing them. Uh, notice that we are powering the op amp from our unregulated power supply to avoid having to have an additional power supply for the op amp, which will sort of defeat the purpose uh, since the regulator is being. Uh, this is being used as part of the power supply for the circuit. And uh, still not an ideal configuration. Notice that in this case, the output is still going to be equal to uh, the zener voltage. And so for one thing, we are limited in terms of our output to um, whatever zener we choose, but only the voltages, uh, the voltage that we have selected. Uh, RZ again is there to supply the biasing for the inner diode, to, so it's supposed to be of uh, whatever value it needs to be to for the minimum inner current to kick in and turn the inner into the reverse bias uh, or inner region. And then uh, the op amp is the one that is providing the output current to the load, and the voltage that appears across the load is still the inner voltage. Um, a couple of points to notice is that, uh, for one thing, our maximum output voltage uh, cannot exceed the power, the maximum power supplies for the op amp, uh, or rather the maximum input voltage cannot exceed the, the maximum power supply for the op amp. The output voltage needs to be um, below that uh, unregulated power supply by a certain amount to make sure that the transistor doesn't go into saturation. And so typical uh, specifications will be for this circuit that we want our uh, V input to be uh, less than the plus max plus minus V supply max for the op amp. And then we want our V out to be um, less than or equal to uh, v in minus 2 volts. 
Now, if we wanted to turn this into a programmable voltage regulator, meaning that we can program the output voltage, uh, we can easily do that by uh, changing the voltage follower to be uh, a non-inverting amplifier. And so if I were to do that, I can simply connect a feedback resistor and an input resistor, RF and RI. And now basically my output voltage I'm going to be labeled as VL for my load voltage, and my VL becomes equal to 1 plus RF divided by RI times my Zener voltage, because this is essentially a non-inverting amplifier where the input signal that's being applied is the, the Zener voltage, the voltage across the Zener diode. Uh, and I can externally program this by uh, selecting the values of my resistors. But if I wanted to make a, a supply that is programmable by the user, the only thing I will need to do is just turn one of those resistors into a potentiometer, and then the user will be able to change the value of the output voltage by simply adjusting the location or the position of the potentiometer. So for example, I could make my RF a potentiometer. And so it will be uh, user adjustable. Notice though that the minimum um, output voltage that I will have with this particular circuit will be uh, V sub Z, my Zener um, output voltage, and that will be when RF is equal to zero. Um, and therefore, my equation becomes that VL, or the load voltage, is equal to one times VZ, the Zener voltage. Um, but in any case, let's imagine I had a 10K potentiometer. This voltage will be able to be adjusted between uh, the Zener voltage and 11 times the Zener voltage. Uh, let's assuming that my RI say was one kilo ohm and my RF was a ten kilo ohm potentiometer. So um, this is all uh, great in terms of the flexibility of a regulator, and uh, now we are not suffering from the sinner having to absorb uh, deltas in uh, variations in load current. But we still have a, a small issue or, or a large issue depending on uh, what op-amp we are able to find. But it is that we are limited in the amount of output current that we can have to our load by the maximum output current for the op-amp. So that will be the main limitation of the circuit. Limitation, maximum load current uh, is equal to I out max from op-amp. And nowadays we can find power op-amps that will be able to provide substantial amount of current. Uh, but typically, the, typically uh, we are going to be using what's known as a pass transistor uh, to try to increase the amount of current available for our load. And that will be the next configuration that we see.